right, well, thank you for the people that are online and the, and the folks, uh, of course, here in the audience. Uh, I'm, it's my pleasure to introduce a longtime colleague, Professor Saiful Islam from Bangladesh University for Engineering and Technology, who's also the director of the Institute of Water and Flood Management, uh, Paul Saparta Bouet. Uh, Saiful's a longtime colleague. He's been here back in 2003 originally for the junior faculty, or 2009 for the junior faculty forum. This is his fifth or fourth visit here, in fact. So. But Saifa got his bachelor's and master's at Bouet and a PhD from Draxel here in the United States. And that was in 19, uh, 2004. His research interests aim at climate change impact on hydrology, water resources management, urban and coastal flood management, remote sensing for disaster risk re reduction, broad, broad swath of issues that Bangladesh has to deal with. He's published over 67 peer reviewed journal articles, more than 100 conference papers contributed to nine chapters, book chapters, and been, is currently a lead author for the IPCC. So we're grateful, very grateful to have Seifel here. I did want to add that we're going to go out for lunch for those who want to join us maybe shortly before noon in uh, the FL Cafe. Also, if you have any interest in a future RAL seminar, Jared is the person to contact. So, uh, but with that, uh, we're very happy to have you here, Seifel. So thank you for the, oh, last comment. I, I, if, if Seifel falls asleep, don't worry. He's, you know, he was up at 4 a.m. With, with a call <laughs> in Bangladesh, but, but we'll give him some coffee to keep him going, so, all right. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tom, for your kind words, and good morning, very good morning. Um, it's a drizzle outside, and thanks, and I'm very glad you are physically, some of them uh, present and some of them online. Um, my name is Saiful Islam, as I presented, and I'm working up Institute of Water and Flood Management, Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, which established in 1962, and our institute established in 1972, and we also um, are doing many kind of research on water and flood issues in uh, Bangladesh, and also we collaborate internationally. We have 27 faculty members and the three postgraduate programs. This year, we introduced new programs on climate risks and modeling, and also in, uh, humanity and engineering, because the world is now need more uh, catastrophic disaster engineering and adaptation needs. So I start with the Bangladesh, <laughs> because before we're going back, what is our future, considering climate change, it's good to see what we are now. Despite a huge population of 180 million, it's a beautiful country, and uh, it, uh, uh, you can see the uh, some areas, Shundarbans in the southwest, and mangrove forest, largest forest, tigers, and it also some haur areas, which is under water six months, beautiful autumn in the country. So it's a, a country which is blessed by three mighty rivers, Ganges, Brahmaputra, and Meghna. In the next slide, we see that it's a country which uh, has received huge amount of water during the monsoon but also we have coastal side in the south. We have different kinds of flood, even in a small country. Uh, we uh, have received huge monsoon uh, water. It's a blessing, but sometimes it's a curse because it gives a river and flood. We also have northeast highlands, Asham and Meghalaya, uh, Basin, uh, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Borak Basin, where there is a flashy rain all in a sudden come. You might heard about Chirapunji, highest rain occurring stations. Uh, that water actually comes as a flush, uh, flushing characteristic, so we call it flush flood, and it uh, damages the standing broke crops. In the down, you see the mangrove Sundarban in southwest, also hilly region in the southeast. So we have issue of urban flood of some big cities like Dhaka, which is a mega city. Uh, so um, uh, 20 million people in a small area living, and uh, I'm also my institute in the Dhaka city. So. These floods, and we also have tidal and storm stars. And these are the current water-related, flood-related disasters we are facing. But also, in the uh, global warming, under the global warming, we are expected to face uh, the changes of the intensity or frequency of the river flood, monsoon flood, and even increase of salinity due to sea level rise. And storms are getting stronger, more frequent, as you know, the ocean absorbs 90% of additional heat. So this is the characteristics we are facing, and this is the condition that we are expecting in the future. We need more real-time predictions, also planning. We need long-term uh, projections from uh, 
for uh, for assays and adapt ourselves because we are not really the cause of uh, greenhouse gas emission, but we are facing the uh, most of the vulnerabilities. We are most of the hazards that is going to be intense and frequent in the future. If you, uh, I'm going to show one of the study we did with the um, Prabhati project with uh, LGED, local government, where we model the big basin Brahmaputra. We also had model um, the hydrological modeling with the Ganges and Meghna Basin. This is uh, open source modeling SWAT. So we get the characteristics from uh, satellite SRTM, DM, and then also land use data and soil data from global data set because this basin 93% is outside Bangladesh. So we have to rely on the uh, global data sets. And uh, we, uh, most of the part is India, also um, uh, some part is Nepal, Bangladesh, and Bhutan. Ganges Basin shared by Bangladesh and Nepal, but Bhomputra is Bhutan and Bangladesh and also India and China as well. So this uh, basin modeling is very uh, essential so that we can know what the changes of the flow so that we can plan adequately to make the infrastructure resilient. The local government engineering department actually invite, uh, asked us to do this research study. And here you can see that we calibrate the model in the Bahadurabad stations and some other stations. And when we find that results are reasonable, Nash coefficient is more than 0.8 for the Hughes Basin, we found it's OK uh, to at least we calibrate as much possible with the given set of data. As you know, we don't have uh, discharge and uh, water level information. I saw some talks, great talks in NCAR about uh, finding the discharge using satellite altimetry. That will be really helpful for Bangladesh to actually have this model better calibrate. So uh, we use the bias corrected CMIP6 output and the Mishra uh, et paper, and then that data set is online. It's a 25 kilometer scale, and we use 13 ensemble member. At that time, it was available. And uh, we calibrate our uh, hydrologic model, and then also one dimensional model inside Bangladesh. It's used HECRAS because inside Bangladesh we have the cross section data, so we can route it fully dynamically. And these are the um, uh, uh, observed versus simulated uh, water level, and uh, we feel like it's more or less uh, represent the present condition. Of course, it is not 100% match with the observation because many interceptions and many aspects, even dry season withdrawal. And so, but it, it's reasonable considering hydrologic and hydrodynamic point of view to represent this uh, catchment in and rivers in Bangladesh. And uh, this uh, is. Can I please interrupt you if you have a question? Yes, okay. um, you can do that. Or. Just curious, are, is this, this is model and calibrated? This is. Yes. Okay, and these yeah. are levels? Yes, like the water levels, channel. yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. thank you. Uh, David, uh, this is a 12 station in the Brahmaputra, Tista, Dutkuma, Dharla, and uh, other river systems. On that right side, you can see. And these are the results we're presenting calibration from 2010 to 14, and 15 to 19 is the validation. And then we apply the climate force, uh, we force the basin model with the 13 ensemble member, and we see the changes in the future. We found that probability distribution function shows that in future, the all um, uh, stations showing that uh, the discharge will be more. And this is the PDF of maximum, minimum, and mean uh, flow of Bahadurabad stations. And with the changes of the warming level, actually, the in it will be more intensity uh, more uh, frequent flooding. So, and these are the monthly uh, ensemble multimodal maximum monthly discharge. We see the here, maybe you can uh, see that the, with the warming scenario from SSP245 and SSP585, which is a high emission scenarios, the um, box plot shows the more spreading and particularly the May, June, July, and August. So we are expecting more flood, uh, uh, more intense flood, and intensity will be increased in the future. And this is interesting because the infrastructure designed by LDD, the road, they need to um, also set up the crest level. So how much crest level they will increase? So 
We did the frequency analysis of 100 year, 50 year, 20 year, and 10 year also. Uh, to see, we already see the crest level of the, uh, or the flood level is already increasing because we used the observed data 1949 to 1998 and 1999 to 2020, we already see some increase. And in the future, in the Bahadurabad uh, station and all other stations, we see, depending on the scenarios, the future water level will be increased. And it's more emission will cause more increase, and then we quantify it and tabulate it for all the stations, uh, 13 stations on that area, to see what is the flood frequency interval and what is the difference between 10 and uh, 100 year and 20 and 100 year. This is important for them to consider the crest uh, elevation uh, for future um, design of the climate resilient road uh, or markets or uh, flood shelters. And then we also, um, there was a task to um, identify the vulnerability of the flood inundation and uh, riverbank erosion to make the uh, area which is very vulnerable. So we, we use the flood assessment, vulnerability assessment using the Sentinel SAR images. We processes and we also use the before flood image to, and also the flood image, and then we uh, subtract and find the flood inundation mapping for different years. But uh, before 2016, we, uh, we do not have the Sentinel images with high resolution. We use the MODIS image instead, which is uh, uh, lowest resolution and 250 meter. On the other hand, Sentinel is 10 meter. So, but uh, we apply that six events of the last two decades and, and make a composite image of the vulnerability of that area. So, uh, but before I apply that, we try to collect information of 150 locations to see our map uh, produces a uh, great result or not, uh, or, or is there any flooding in 2019, 20, and 2010? So we collected these points, and then we um, try to um, change our mapping um, methods so that uh, threshold values, so that we can uh, match with the observation. And we also uh, use some of the criteria, precision, recall, F1, and overall accuracy criteria. And finally, when we are satisfied, we say, okay, this algorithm can be used to uh, process the inundation. And these are the overall accuracy for uh, 2020 and 2019 flood map, which seems uh, more or less okay. Uh, but uh, of course, it's a huge area, and satellite image has a uh, limitation of mixed pixel and other pixel. And uh, of course, the sensor uh, always not giving good results because of cloud and other issues. So um, uh, finally, the, for local government, we uh, use 25 Upozilla vulnerability map of that uh, region, and we even map them in the Google map. You can see. Uh, the color of the difference, maybe uh, it's all in the Google map, so you can they can zoom and see which area is more vulnerable, more flooded out of six, which are two times flooded, which are four times flooded. So composite map is useful for them to know uh, which are more vulnerable area on that region. And then we also um, find the vulnerability of riverbank erosion because you know Brahmaputra uh, sometime during the monsoon it width is 15 to 20 kilometer. It's like a big, a big ocean or something, and you cannot see from one side to another side. So, uh, and then huge sediment come in the Brahmaputra, around one billion ton. So, with that, you it is not easy uh, to um, uh, invest which area because it's dynamically it's a braided river. The bar sandbar forms, and then after four or five years, it disappears. And many people start living or doing agriculture and many things in this island small islands, but it could be diminished after two, three, uh, yeah, two, three flood years. Even the banks could be eroded. So we need a bank line erosion mapping. So we uh, fit uh, some of the criteria when we say the highly vulnerable, depending on the number of flooded and how periphery of the invest, uh, infrastructure is far away from. Based on that, and also the river bank, how far from the bank or is the bank erosion rate, we provided them all the 100 markets they are going to um, in this, um, going to invest, uh, IFAD, uh, which with the Bangladesh government. So we provided the highly moderate and uh, low vulnerable area so that they can choose the location. Some of them they discarded because it's a huge invest for 
the country and if it is washed away, it's more vulnerable, they leave that uh, investment and select another location. This is a finally published with a report to the LGT, Local Government Engineering Department, how to make uh, infrastructure more resilient. And we also recommend it, uh, provide some guidelines uh, based on our uh, analysis. We, we um, uh, for 10 year flood, uh, 0.3 meter increment because the return period of the village or Union Road is not high. So we recommend that uh, to increase the test level so that bituminous concrete uh, road is not submerged. Once it is submerged, it is uh, completely destroyed. So that's why they uh, try to increase their uh, existing level. And for the flood shelter, we additional 0.5 meter increment because flood shelter should be free from the risk. So we use the 100 year return period analysis value. And then uh, finally, uh, the river um, bank erosion uh, with the market, how, uh, we say that how much it is a flood risk, how much it is a bank erosion risk for all the uh, 20 flood shelter and 100 market. So, and we also see, you can, this is uh, interesting, maybe you see there's no side slope, which is very important because uh, even this uh, union level road, but uh, without side slope, because land is very costly, it can actually collapse. So minimum side slope, we uh, say the one is to 1.5 or at least two for the sandy soil so that it cannot collapse after uh, one flood year. And, and this road actually newly constructed because once bitumen road is inundated, that's no longer used actually. So every year uh, so we have to uh, carpet it if it is not higher than the flood level. Uh, so, um, uh, and sometimes we see that there is no protection. If there is a small river, uh, there is no protection in the site. So that we actually provided different kinds of protections depending on the conditions. Started from vetiver grass, which is good for the site slope protection, also different concrete blocks and other. We also uh, recommended um, that the culvert should be designed adequately, otherwise it can wash away. You see some of the places wash away or culvert failure because it is not designed properly. And uh, some roads, which is a concrete road, it is a twice expensive that bituminous road, but it, it lasts with the flood. So we recommend that whenever possible because uh, it's a cost issue, but uh, we recommend that, that it should be RCC road and with adequate protection. Um, so this is um, my part of the climate, uh, my presentation of the climate resilient infrastructure and how the um, climate projections and hydrology modeling can help. We are going to the next uh, two small case studies. One is the flash flood forecasting where I use the NCAR model URF, and how we can um, forecast the flood uh, through Bangladesh Water Development Board. So this is the area where we are dealing with um, not this area of Bangladesh, which is high land in outside Bangladesh, also higher, but uh, big um, mountain ranges like Himalaya, then Meghalaya and Borak, Tripura are outside the Bangladesh. You can see the elevation. And so that's uh, all on a sudden rain come Bangladesh as a flash flood. So from that, you see this is a beautiful area and this is very unique geographic area. Um, uh, six months underwater and six months the paddy cultivated in that area. And it is a howl because it's a bowl of water. And <laughs> you can see it's a fishing, a fishing uh, ground. It's a 25% fish actually come from this area. And this is when the dry period after monsoon and water re re recedes. You see this is a huge area of uh, paddy cultivation. And this is because it's a lot of uh, nutrient comes from fishing, from, from fish, from, uh, from um, upstream. So that actually give him huge uh, crop production on that area without much effort. And during our area, uh, during monsoon, you see people are traveling only by the boats, typically. <laughs> and because the huge water come and it should go through this hour to the Bay of Bengal by the Meghna. So we cannot make big infrastructure so that it can uh, affect the uh, flow of the water from north to south. So boat is the main media, small boats. And at that time, the marriage is occur mostly because people doesn't have any other work <laughs> other than fishing. So, <laughs> so it's a time period for them and very good poet and poem created during that 
that time. <laughs> so this is uh, something very interesting geographic, but uh, all on a sudden, if flash flood come uh, in that area before they harvest the crop, that's the challenge. And pre-monsoon season, they are always worried about uh, flash flood um, uh, coming. So this is three basin, uh, Meghalaya, Borak, and Tripura, and that's uh, actually water receipt in this area. And all on a sudden, if it comes before the harvesting, is uh, dangerous. If it is received within one day, it's fine. If it is stay five, four, six days, then the crop is completely damaged. It happens in 2017, 90% of the crop was damaged. In the upstream river system is like this. You see Lukha River from India, and then Shurma is like this, and local boards are like this. And so we apply the upstream rivers using basin model. And in Bangladesh, we have the cross-section we use the HECRAS, upstream was HEC HMS, so we use the hydrodynamic model, HECRAS, and we force by the URF uh, simulations. So uh, the flash flood occurrence on that area, uh, convecting cloud, excess rainfall, and the Meghalaya, Tripura Basin, Borak Basin, and then it comes to Bangladesh, and it caused uh, 2017 about 90% crop was damaged. So it's a very challenging to predict accurately flash flood events as early as possible is better because then farmers can harvest their crop. But government also buy some harvester machine because during the crisis period, you will not find no, many people helping you because they help themselves. So it's a crisis of labor, even if you issue the warning. So harvest the crop during the all on a sudden in two days is, is very difficult and price is so high so that maybe the, the rice price will go up. So government buy a harvester machine, many harvester machine, uh, so with the loan and something, so that they can quickly m using the machine to uh, cut the crops. But then again, challenge is where you put that because it's already study inundated. So government makes some killers to up um, uh, area where a, a platform where you can put the crops temporarily before after the flash flood recede you can. Uh, um, to collect the crops. But it is important to provide the accurate warning because it's a convection very rapidly. And it is a challenge. We are uh, using the GFS force, uh, NOAA um, NCAR boundary condition, uh, NOAA boundary condition, and we also run the URF model. We get help from Tom Hobson, thank you very much, and also Francois to when our visit in last time, and they actually help us to set up model. We are now looking forward using the radar data for data assimilation and uh, a more good product from NCAR that could give a more accurate forecasting of the uh, weather. And then, uh, based on that forecast, we can run HMS, a hydrological model, and then HECRAS, and then provide the early warning by Bangladesh Water Development Board. Models are already deployed. Hopefully, by next uh, yeah, season, they will start predicting. We are still correcting some of the water level data, uh, but hydrologic model is very good. And um, um, so this is the WORF model. We set up for defined resolution, um, nine kilometer, but three kilometer is still we did not because uh, one of the problem is download the data. Maybe uh, putting the model in cloud services would be better. And another could be using the um, um, fast simulation uh, with the the high HPCs or supercomputers so that we can create results very quickly so that we can transfer it into the area. And uh, this is our domains of 27, 9, and 3 kilometer. We run now 9 kilometer because it's, it's quickly dis, uh, complete. 3 kilometer takes long time for our machines. Uh, so um, that could be one area how we can set up the model in virtual machines or cloud machines so that we can Simulate. We uh, write a paper wh which uh, sh uh, using different uh, macrophysics, cumulus uh, physics, and planetary boundary layers, uh, different options about uh, experiment of 17 options. So um, hopefully it is not yet published. If it is published, then we can um, show the what are the best options we found over the uh, some uh, case study we done using the IMD. Uh, Indian Metrological Department, GPM, and TRIM data. Uh, so uh, we compared and we found that uh, <clears throat> microphysics scheme eta freer and cumulic scheme, uh, cumulus scheme can uh, free scape and planetary boundary layer 
uh, scheme, Yonshi University is uh, producing better results. Even though we need uh, more experiments to confirm and some data and, uh, simulation could help. And it is now uh, running in uh, water board servers. So we, we can have a look and see if there is a problem. They are now running it, testing the data. And then uh, we use the HMS hydrological model and uh, flood flow routing from the basin. And it's a huge basin of Meghna. And we uh, have uh, boundary conditions uh, inside Bangladesh. Uh, so we calibrate the model. But these are the uh, flow of, we calculated uh, from the HMS simulation. In, and that feed in the HECRA, dyna, hydrodynamic model. So uh, <clears throat> we have 158 sub-basins, uh, 38 basins outside Bangladesh, and they stop them inside Bangladesh. And we have uh, 25 forecast stations. Recently, it is uh, 35 forecast stations and 30 boundary point where uh, discharge is needed. And uh, this is uh, the division of uh, uh, rainfall, uh, we use the height, uh, we use the Thiessen polygon to calculate the influence area of the data, and based on the IM degraded data, we apply, and we um, calibrate again the hydrologic model is the standard indicators, correlation coefficient, Nash coefficient, and bias, and then uh, we found some of the stations is very good. So, and uh, provide the result. But one of the problem is we don't have radar working in this area. BMT has, but they don't have data collected. Hopefully new radar will capture and we can do better um, uh, correction of the rainfall forecast. And also uh, there is less measurement of discharge. You can see only few black points during the pre-monsoon season. So increasing auto gaze, government is trying to buy auto gazes so that they can uh, provide better data so we can calibrate the model better. And finally, stress forecasting. You see, when the inundation occurs, they, they collected the crops like this in the board, and, and it, it, so it's, it's, it's challenging. We have some stations uh, inside the area, and we uh, use the 30 boundary location discharge to model 400 cross sections of the from water board and 218 from uh, uh, hectares we incorporated. So this is the network. We are simulating 12 rivers, 18 rivers, at rated discharge, and two, 12 rivers we feed by the HMS. So these are the forecast stations. We uh, Before the project, there was only eight. Now there are 35, actually. So we increased last year another 10, so 25 and 10, 35 stations. But there was no system uh, to flash flood forecasting. So it is. Uh, under this project, it is now water board is applying. And uh, we calibrated. We are now also planning to apply the deep learning to correct the forecast. We tried with uh, uh, ANN, but we, we are thinking to apply more uh, machine learning algorithm to correct the biases between the uh, observed and forecasted water level. And yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, sorry, Tim Schneider. Um, quick question then. Yeah. So the, those new stations, are they are they just measuring level or are they measuring discharge? Some stations, new stations is only water level, but some stations, 17, they are discharged Great. inside Bangladesh. Yeah. Thank, thank you. And uh, it's important to know the discharge. And so this is uh, the free open source tools, uh, Dell Fuse, which can combine all this uh, plugin uh, as an adapter. So, that use uh, 20 countries at operational forecasting. We had uh, imported, uh, imported, we write a paper on that. So it's a weather forecasting, uh, um, hydrology, and also it's a interaction with the graphical interface. It can provide the forecast and disseminate very quickly. And uh, this is some of the results of the published paper. Um, of course, the good ones. We did not show the bad ones. <laughs> but a lot to do uh, because use uncertainty. And the, and the next one is the two-dimensional uh, flood inundation mapping for the area. That also need computational resources. It's a huge challenge. So this is the initial mesh. We are working on that uh, to uh, maybe some animation. You can see even if I click. I don't know how much time I have. Okay. Okay, so 
maybe if it is animated. It's 2017, the extreme case. Anyway. Uh, Oh, okay. Okay, uh, maybe, um, okay, anyway, let's, we'll, we'll do it later. We'll do it later. No, it's, no, it's, it's going. It was, it was, oh, it's going. Yeah, okay. it was going. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, can, I can see the streamlines moving. Uh, okay. Okay. The, so you, you need to click, make sure you click the play button. Correctly. Okay. Okay, let's see. It should be coming. Okay, we'll do after the talk. Maybe. Yeah, it's good that uh, two-dimensional capability of HECRAS, which is uh, great that you can even put the infrastructure embankments or others, because there are submersible embankments which go underwater after harvesting the uh, and during the monsoon period. So uh, those are uh, also fast primary defense. It's called submersible embankment. So, um, and then the next case study, the last part of my talk is the storm source modeling and to make uh, the area uh, more, uh, coastal area more um, resilient or we know the cost of the damage of houses and insurance can find useful for this tool. It can be used also for the uh, cyclone forecasting. We have the running model and this is uh, the today we collected uh, the upcoming cyclone in formed Bay of Bengal, and it will be very severe cyclonic storms, 160 kilometer per hour, and you can see the projections of IMD, and it will land for 14 May. Hopefully I reach home by this time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to meet with the cyclone on the plane, <laughs> but, uh, but it looks like it's going to come on 14. Anyway, so, um, uh, this is the track, and every cyclone caused a lot of damage. And this is a summary. Uh, I missed last two, three cyclones. But this uh, phenomena, uh, this cyclonic event now become more and more frequent. Uh, in the Bay of Bengal, in the past, you can see the Bola cyclone is 70, then 1991 cyclone, and uh, super cyclone, actually 235 <laughs> kilometer per hour. If it is more than 220 kilometer, we call it uh, super cyclone, and then Cedar is a big cyclone. But now every year, even two season, we receive uh, we we see a cyclone landfall either in West Bengal or in Bangladesh or now is a Myanmar. So, but uh, one good thing Bangladesh can claim that they make the country uh, more resilient in terms of fatality, uh, because we have a huge program of cyclone shelter, coastal volunteer. Now sixty thousand they work make people to the shelters and bring people to the shelter and also, but we cannot reduce the damages. We have uh, coastal polders, but still you see the damage is last cyclone, super cyclone. It's the uh, wind speed is three minutes, is 240 uh, kilometer per hour. We have damage is 1.5 US dollar, billion US dollar. So we reduce fatality from 500,000 where there is not much forecast in Bola cyclone in the lower uh, right corner to the 26 people in officially in the cyclone arm fund. So this is a success. On the other hand, damage is increasing. And uh, if, because coastal area is more infrastructure, more development happening, we are now signing deep sea port with Japan and India. So many activities is going on. But still, you see that uh, this uh, forecast um, um, could help, but uh, some reduce the fatality, but not the damage much. So resilient coastal Bangladesh is very uh, challenging, and one of the challenges is increasing sea level rise. You can see the IPCC projection Arctic mm -hmm. uh, ice is melting, Antarctic land ice, and Greenland is melting, and projections, you all know that from IPCC report it could be up to one meter, which will be <coughs> very severe for Bangladesh because it's a flood delta of zero to five meter in the coastal region. And you see there is also subsidence issues in the coastal area. This is a recent paper uh, by Melanie Becker, and you can see some area subsidence is seven millimeter per year, so which is 
100 year 0.7 meter additionally. So relative sea level is much high. So I think you know more better than me, Enkar, uh, has a hurricane wolf, and but Bay of Bengal is uh, actually <laughs> breeding ground of uh, cyclone. You see many cyclones occur uh, because it's relatively warmer than Arabian Sea, but I said recent paper, they show the Arabian Sea cyclone are increasing than Bay of Bengal. Because of the global warming, we have this month low vertical share, wind share, but in, during the monsoon from June, the vertical wind share is high, which prevent to occurring the cyclone. So we have cyclone during last um, of April and May, and then again after the monsoon uh, recedes, uh, and then in October and November. So pre-monsoon and post-monsoon and cyclone, we already see the first cyclone of this uh, season of this year has formed, um, and it is, has additional moisture from South China Sea, and uh, it's a blocking uh, ferocity of the wind uh, because there is no terrain. So it's a flat topography. So and it's also rotated anticlockwise, which makes the path uh, track is clockwise. And you're not always find Bangladesh or West Bengal <laughs> because of the nature of the or the Myanmar. So uh, sometimes also it uh, landfall in Urisha or Chennai in India. So we are uh, funnel shape. Uh, the Bay of Bengal uh, comes to Bangladesh, and sea surface temperature already you know that 0.11 degree warming. And this year now, some places in the Bay of Bengal, 32 degrees centigrade. And cyclone means temperature are 27 degrees. So it's a, uh, so under a project of OSS lost um, um, management um, framework, we actually um, lost, re, uh, lost modeling framework, sorry. Uh, it's open source based rigs modeling platform uh, by UK and then they also you uh, um, have a partner, UK Met Office and Buet. We um, quantify the damages that could occur from vulnerability assessment, and we uh, actually get very high resolution cyclone simulation. Uh, we have uh, 2012 at the time known cyclone. This is still the list is added. And Met Office uh, Headley Center actually produces uh, uh, high resolution simulation, one kilometer and four kilometer of these historic cyclones over uh, Bay of Bengal. And uh, they, uh, these are the multi-model, nine ensemble members. So uh, we uh, apply that to a, a coastal model, Del 3D, by Delta S, which is an open source model. And uh, from there, you can see that uh, we can predict the storm surges. Uh, and this is our um, domain of Del 3D model. So we also put the boundary condition as a discharge up east, downstream the um, astronomical tide, and then simulate the models. And uh, of, of course, for cyclone event, we use the wind and pressure of the cyclone uh, using Holland method. It's a graphical interface with the Del 3D dashboard, which produces the boundary condition. We drive the cyclones and, and see comparing the observation and see which of the ensemble is close to the um, uh, observation. So based on that, we then prepared the inundation mapping for the area. We found the Headley Center model six and some cases five is close. So these are the uh, most uh, educate, uh, most um, possible inundation pattern of the, this cyclone. And from that, we uh, also simulated, uh, my another colleague simulated um, this uh, cyclone and tidal surge of that area of uh, since 1991. Recently, we found the tidal um, flood is uh, sometimes more than even cyclonic storms if it is not directly landfall in Bangladesh because spring tide and tidal flood is increasing. And uh, there are many different kinds of element at rigs, uh, different house by kacha and semi. Uh, Paka and Paka houses, you can see their figures. Uh, and uh, some roads, which is mud road, which also a single brick road. We also have double brick lane. And uh, so different uh, uh, type of bricks, we go to data sampling, ask them how much water level caused their uh, house inundated, or if up to some level when that is completely damaged. So you can see the uh, the buildings, uh, after some time, it's a mud building, it's completely collapsed. So 
So we are trying to make a deep damage curve and also damage cost using the um, consumer price index so that it brings to the current uh, price uh, level and because some of the events is historical. So, and then make the deep damage cur curve. So from the inundation death, we can say that what should be the um, uh, damage. So this is the uh, cyclone inundation extent of the known three cyclone we work uh, of the two case study area. One is southwest, another is the, is the southeast region. So based on the curve, we demonstrated how we can make uh, um, uh, different element risk, uh, what should be the damage in terms of euros. So the figures right hand side of the different kinds of um, infrastructure element and different damage uh, occur. And finally, this product is uh, in the Oasis uh, hub and where there are many case studies around the world, it's an open platform. Any known cyclone, if, you, if we, someone can put an inundation, uh, then it's possible to find the damages of that area. That is very helpful for the UK and many countries for insurance company. And this uh, platform has many case studies on flood, earthquake, and cyclones and anything. So that's all from me. Uh, I hope I complete, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. OK. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, so, yeah, thanks for the seminar, Saiful. Um, you mentioned that your um, when you're running the, the wharf model, you used to be running a three kilometer nest over Bangladesh, and now you've gone back to just doing the nine kilometer yeah. simulation because, given your current computational resources that you have available, the three kilometer takes too long. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious in terms of the accuracy uh, or the skill between, uh, have you compared the skill from when you had the three kilometer nest to then? <laughs> dropping back to a nine kilometer domain, uh, is the skill similar? Did it improve? Did it degrade? I guess, yeah, just how does it compare? Yeah, thank you. Um, unfortunately, we could not. <laughs> I think this is the task we should uh, do in the future. With uh, also a turn on the data simulation, data data. We are thinking about incorporated. We, we use this experiment on nine kilometer to see what is the best uh, possible uh, physical schemes, but we had to do with the three kilometer versus nine kilometer. But uh, I roughly know some of the papers, they said that it's uh, not much difference, but uh, it's, of course, it's changing with time and, and the location and time. Maybe that would be very useful for to explore further. And that needs further, I think, uh, opportunity to collaborate <laughs> with this area. Thank you, Jared. Yeah. Yes. Hi, uh, so Ethan Gutman, I do a lot of work in hydrology and climate impacts, but wow. not in this kind of region. Um, I, I also have a background in geology, and that's more where this question comes from, which is how, when you think about 100-year timescales, mm. how much of is the delta building up due to sediment supply and or subsiding as the sediments weigh it down? Um, and how much does that impact your future projections as you start thinking about storm surge and flooding? Thank you very much. Actually, recently there is a paper out in Nature. Maybe you might have a look. I can. One of my colleagues is also there. In that paper, it shows that it will be slowed down. The subsidence will slow down because if uh, subsidence come with the sediment supply the same amount, it will not be affected that much with the sea level rise. But the question is, if there is so many infrastructure in the upstream dams reserve in China or India. The sediment supply will be less, and that could not be helping us on the long time scale. So it's a very good paper recently published. And unfortunately, I did not consider the sediment interactions with that, but that's a good area <laughs> to further explore what is the condition. But only, not only the inundation, but also I like to mention the salinity increase in the coastal area, which is also a big problem. Yeah. Thanks. Rajesh, yes. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Seful. Very uh, impressive presentation. Um, I actually have a suggestion. Um, while you are trying to get more computational resources, I know that most of the ensemble 
weather predictions that come out of uh, India Meteorological Department or the National Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. They also cover Bangladesh. Yeah. And I just, while you were talking, I went on their website and I see Bangladesh on all of their maps. Yeah. And I also see that you have a very good partnership with the IMD. So I'm thinking yeah. like if some type of arrangement can be made between BUET and IMD on accessing that model output and developing some ensemble products or probabilistic products using that output. I think that's a very important, uh, I think, collaboration we desperately need <laughs> yeah. from our upstream countries. <laughs> and uh, not only the rainfall forecast, we uh, did also water level and discharge. And as you know, currently for the Ganges and Brahmaputra discharge, information is restricted. You cannot get from India. But uh, for the flood season, Bangladesh Water Development Board and uh, Indian um, organization, CWC, and also uh, IMD, they have an agreement that uh, they will provide a, a six or seven station data, but not the whole area. But during the flood, water level only, not the discharge. But it will be really useful to have this. Uh, India has producing its own GCM and has bias corrected rainfall information because they have the local gauges uh, in the India and 40% catchment is India. So it would be really useful, to, even with the collaboration with Nepal, hydrometeorologic uh, organization. I know I'm working with CWC and other projects. So all collaboration, China, Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Bhutan is is really helpful. Even though Brahmaputra flood, you need a Chinese uh, um, model results. They are also have their own model. Uh, every country has. So more collaboration, but right now there are collaboration. I'm not all uh, pessimistic, <laughs> but it should be increasing. And also the satellite-based altimetry and discharge measurement, that's a new area because it's uh, you cannot restrict on that. <laughs> so if we can uh, calibrate very well, that would also be helpful for boundary condition. Thank you, Rajesh, I think. Yeah, sure. and, and another is, I think, so some of our colleagues in RAL here, yeah. uh, they work on combining precipitation information from various sources, including model output, satellite measurements, rain gauges, to improve the accuracy of model okay. predictions. I think that's, that is a potential area of collaboration between us and BUET. Yes, yes, of course, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hi, hi, Tim again for the people online. Um, so first of all, that was a great presentation. I'm super impressed with the Thank work you. you guys are doing. Yeah. It's it's really comprehensive. So congratulations and Thank you. Thank you for sharing it. Um, I guess kind of circling back to Jared's point for a moment, um, there's been a, a fair number of studies here um, kind of headed up by Roy Rasmussen, Andreas Prine and others. I don't know if you're familiar with their work. But they've looked at this question of, in particular, like representing mesoscale convective systems, the large storms that mid-latitude okay. storms. Obviously, you're in a different regime here yeah. where there's a lot of <laughs> lot more warm rain processes and all that. So yeah. it's a different challenge. But there may be some insights into some of the publications from Rasmussen et al. Prine, which led me to another thought, which is there's a convection permitting modeling workshop. Okay. So the kind of high resolution modeling wow. we're talking about in Bergen, Norway, uh, late August. And the registration and abstract submission closes on the 15th of May. Okay. So you, if, if you need it, you can reach me or I got okay. your card, I can email you. But if you're interested, yeah. that would be, I think, a good I think that community be interested in the work you're doing because I don't know that this part of the world represented in that group real well. And I think you'd have a chance to interact with a lot of folks that are, you know, driving this kind of high resolution modeling and they're looking out even at climate time scales. Wow. <laughs> so I think it would be an, a good place to interact if you're yeah. able to go. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to put that on your okay. radar screen, Thank so you. to speak. Yeah, and high resolution is, is really needed for for predicting cyclone, uh, tropical cyclone uh, with the accuracy and also climate time scale. As you know, the after 15 kilometer of horizontal resolution, it's not correct. Uh, and there are many, you know, uh, initiative to uh, make it down to higher resolution, 12 kilometer, 10 kilometer uh, with the long simulations. Uh, we are looking forward to, to know what's going on. And lots of attribution studies also going on. Uh, 
or it is without greenhouse gases, with greenhouse gases, because IPCC, uh, so, sorry, uh, COP also, uh, last COP you see, there is a loss and damage funding uh, for if it is attributable to the climate change, hopefully some other initiative to compensate uh, some of the losses. And, and uh, global collaboration is really needed. And thank you. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, one quick comment about that, too. Uh, yeah. uh, Seifel has really ran with the WARF model. He came for a training, and then Francois, when he was here, actually set up a version of yes. RT, a really streamlined yeah. version of RTFDDA, and he's you really impressively run with it. But there's, we think there's wonderful opportunities to collaborate with people who are, you know, more aware of the the monsoon sophisticate uh, the systems that are being that are working there. In particular, they've got two radar. We were just talking about some of yeah. the radar that's involved, and even a now casting system that's. Those systems are not being utilized at all currently. Yeah. Yes. Right? So, but yeah. I did have a question, Seifel. I mean, a lot going on: inundation, uh, the big river mo uh, flooding, the, the flash flood modeling in the Northeast Highlands, and I guess I'm not as aware of the population density in Bangladesh. Uh, if you were, to, I mean, it used to be the the storm surge. You yeah. showed the 500,000 yeah. people died in 1970. Yeah. yeah. Right, and that's yeah. drastically changed. Given the way things are changing in a climate, to our, with our climate, where do you yeah. see, uh, what, what do you think is, is gonna be the most vulnerable part of Bangladesh? Yeah, All most, things considered, if you will. Uh, most vulnerable is the coastal area, because even though we reduce the human fatality, but you see the damage is not, uh, we are not able to reduce. So uh, some cases we improving the coastal barrier is called a coastal embankment improvement project CIP funded by World Bank to increase the height and strength of the embankment. But uh, many about seven thousand coastal polders. So it's a one hundred thirty nine polders. We are now only improving ten, and next phase is twenty. It's a huge amount of money also needed. We need more cyclone shelter, and uh, it's a huge vulnerable area. And if this cyclone, the cyclone Mocha landfall in Bangladesh, uh, it could have lots of damage in agriculture, road infrastructure, trees, school. It could take many years. Even cyclone Isla fixing the embankment takes three years. With saline water, they go by, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a catastrophe. So that's the most important thing. But also flash flood and flooding challenge is there. So. Um, I think these are most important. Even recent time, lightning is increasing. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a very good presentation of your colleague that how can give a forecast within 30 minutes, and that can be transferred with the mobile network. So this kind of study and now casting uh, will be useful uh, for Bangladesh to, uh, to make it more resilient, or even climate time scale, very good simulation would be helpful. Anything from online? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, well. Th uh, thank you again, Seifel, for okay. tour de force of all the all the great work you guys are doing there. Just to repeat, we are going to meet for lunch. If anybody wants to join us, probably shortly before noon, or thereabouts in the uh, foothills cafeteria. So, and, and Seifel is here for the rest of today. Uh, he's got some ambitious plans about how we might be able to find some funding to have in car mm -hmm. support these ambitious efforts that he's working on. And uh, we'd love to have you join and, and discuss. So thank, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's really honored to be here. <laughs>